Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Janan Jawad, and in this short presentation, I'm going to talk about are your adrenals affecting your thyroid? Now, what are the adrenal glands? The, the, the adrenal glands are about the size of a shape of a quarter, and we have two of them, and they sit on top of your kidneys. In layman's terms, I describe your adrenal glands as your thyroid battery backup. Now, the adrenal glands are multifactorial with the functions. One, they help control your electrolyte balance. Two, it helps with cortisol, your anti-stress hormone release. Three, it does have sex hormones, especially for females in menopause. When females go through menopause, their ovaries shut down and all their sex hormones, the testosterone, the progesterone, the estrogens, are get shunted to the adrenal glands, okay? Also, they help with the fight or flight response, with the dopamine release, the norepinephrine release, and the epinephrine, and the epinephrine release. So, the adrenal glands are very, very important in their function, and what happens when you're overstimulating the adrenal glands, it's essentially shutting down your thyroid. Who am I? My name is Dr. Janan Jawad. My website is www.totalhealthdepage.com. My Facebook page, and if you're watching this on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button right down below and the bell notification right next to it. I try to upload videos weekly, and when I do, you'll be the first to be notified if you hit that bell button. So, the adrenals in your thyroid gland. One of the things I always suggest to my patients are support your adrenal glands, and you'll be supporting your thyroid gland. Now, when I work with patients who have thyroid issues, I want to do a full thyroid panel. The typical medical doctors will only, will only do a couple tests, the TSH and maybe the T4. That's just basically saying, okay, your thyroid gland is working. I like to do a full thyroid panel because I want to know what hormones are being made, what hormones are being utilized, which ones are being reabsorbed, and so forth and so on, because that is a window into how the adrenal glands are being, are being functioned, okay? The question is, do you have thyroid problems? Are you experiencing hair loss, especially the outer thirds of the eyebrows? That's an important indicator that something may be wrong with your thyroid gland. Do you have brain fog? Are you experiencing depression and or anxiety? A lot of females and males, okay, who have thyroid issues, they're depressed or they feel anxiety or, and or they have fatigue. But the main indicator of thyroid issues is weight gain. One of the functions of the thyroid gland is to help how much how we burn calories at rest. So if you have a low functioning thyroid, this is probably why you put on about 20 pounds without even trying. Is there a connection between your thyroid gland and the adrenals? You better believe it. Yes, there is. There is a connection between the adrenal glands and the thyroid because like I mentioned earlier, your adrenal glands essentially are your thyroid battery backup. So if you're overtaxing your adrenal glands, you're shutting down your thyroid. So there is an important connection between the two. So most people who suffer with thyroid problems continue to suffer and experience these symptoms despite taking their thyroid hormone. Now, for the people who, do, who, have, who are suffering from hypothyroid and they're on a levothyroxine, a synthroid, and so forth, what's happening is that they're stimulating their adrenal glands by shunting out too much cortisol. Because what's happening is that your thyroid, the thyroid gland is not, make, is not producing sufficient amount of hormones. So you are, yes, you're artificially giving yourself hormones, but what's happening with the thyroid gland, it's still experiencing a low hypothyroid symptom. So the adrenal glands have to kick in. So the goal, the goal of this short video is explain one of the most overlooked parts of the body that is essential for a healthy thyroid function. Now. By the time we actually do adrenal function, we test for it, the adrenal gland is 80% dysfunctional by the time it shows. So it's really hard to test the adrenal function as is. So you may hear, again, same terms, adrenal fatigue, adrenal insufficiency, adrenal exhaustion. It all basically means the same thing. You're feeling tired all the time. You're gaining weight. You have high blood pressure. You have a hard time sleeping. You may be experiencing brain fog. This all correlates with the adrenal glands. So what do you want to do? So no matter what you call, so no matter what you call it, you suffer a thyroid disease and you're not improving your health, then you'll have to have your adrenal glands evaluated. 
Step one, this is what I always suggest, avoid the adrenal stimulators. If you're overtaxing the adrenals with the coffee, with the soda, with the energy drinks, the monster drinks, the Red Bull, these are all taxing the adrenals. Now, the adrenals are very fragile, so if you're experiencing fatigue, then when you're overstimulating it, yes, you're gonna, you're gonna tax them even more and you're gonna cause more damage. Number two, avoid the concentrated sugars. Adrenal glands are dependent on healthy sugar. What happens when we put the artificial sweeteners in, like the fructose, the sucrose, the high fructose corn syrup, it's shutting down the adrenal glands. Fructose, fruit, is about 10 times sweeter than our natural sugar called, called glucose. The problem with fructose is that it bogs up the liver, okay? It gets stored in the liver and it bogs it down. So this is why we could actually get a fatty liver by eating too much fruit. Now the question is, how, much, how many servings of fruit should you, do I recommend? Two. Two servings of fruit per day. Yes, you can get fat off fruit because again, it's called, it contains fructose. Sucrose is an artificial sweetener and especially the high fructose corn syrup. Corn syrup, there's, it's disguised in different, by many different names. So you want to read the labels. The problem is when you have high fructose corn syrup because artificial, it taxes the liver, which will tax the adrenal glands. Two, I'm sorry, three, avoid. The major adrenal stimulants, nicotine, alcohol, this is all going to overtax on your thyroid gland. Foods to avoid, any food that you have an allergy to, but also you want to look out for this, the foods that are typically, they have food sensitivities. Your top five, dairy, wheat, gluten, corn, peanuts, chocolate, like milk chocolate, shellfish. Careful about shellfish, okay? Either you may have a hypersensitivity, hypersensitivity to it or not. You want to know how are they how are they raised? Is it wild or is it farm? Okay. What's going to happen is going to cause a release of histamines and inflammatory chemicals. And what happens, and these in turn stimulate the adrenals and your fight or flight response and affects your thyroid. Because what's happening is that you have an oversensitivity reaction releasing cortisol, which is shutting down the thyroid. So other foods that you want, other foods you want to avoid are partially hydrogenated fats. So it's very essential that you start to read the labels when you're going through the grocery store. You want to avoid these hydrogenated which are called trans fats. This is your cotton seed, your corn oil, your vegetable oil, your canola oil. All these oils are unhealthy fats and what's going to happen, it's going to inhibit the adrenal hormone synthesis. Artificial sweeteners, again, artificial sweeteners for many reasons. They're 10 times sweeter than natural glucose. They're gonna overtax your pancreas with the insulin release. This is your Splendas, your Aspartame, Sweet Low. These artificial sweeteners will make, will make you fat by tricking your body into, into making you eat more. It literally hijacks your fullness factor. So this is why you can eat so much more than if you were just taking regular sugar. So overtraining, this is an important factor. This is for my athletes or people who, again, who are athletically inclined. This is your marathon runners, your extreme athletes. I'm a bodybuilder. I've been working out for 25 years. And the key thing is, what's happening is that when you train, you're overtaxing adrenal glands as is. So overtraining will just, again, fry them even more. My thing is always, if, when you're going to the gym or you're going to go out for that run, if you just pray that your car breaks down, it's time to take some days off. Maybe you need to take a week off, maybe two weeks off, okay? Because overtraining keeps your body locked in this fight or flight response. Yes, overtraining is good, but there's a fine line between training and overtraining. Do you have any of these problems? If you're experiencing any of these symptoms and think that you have adrenal fatigue, please contact our office and schedule a free consultation or go to our website, www. Click in that upper right-hand corner. You can contact me and schedule a free consultation for 15 minutes, and I'll be more than happy to answer any of your questions and see if I could help you furtherwise. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.